this uh, front suspension, neither one of them have a nut. That's a pretty big mistake. <laughs> I am super excited to do this lift kit and the big tires. It's gonna be super awesome. So first I wanna give you a little before shot of how the four wheeler looks now. And then immediately I'm gonna give you an after shot and then I'll show you guys how I did it all. These are the new tires I'm putting on. They're 30 inch ITP cryptids. My goal for these is snow. Here in Southern Idaho, we don't get a lot of mud. It's a desert. The rest of the year, I'm doing a lot of just like dirt and rock trails. So these are just gonna be a winter tire for me. I got them used all four for like the price of one brand new. So pretty good deal. I hope they hold up. They look a little old. It's gonna be so awesome, you guys. I'm so excited. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jack up the four wheeler and get the old tires off. Just got a Ryobi impact driver. Let's see how it does. Might not be good enough to break them loose, but. Oh yeah, baby. So much easier than having to hook up to air. When Alex came down to help me get the off-road Fiero running, he was like, dude, get an electric impact driver. It is a lot easier. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. Alex, uh, Lightspeed Fieros and retro rides. These are actually uh, really nice, uh, what are they, clinchers. I like them quite a bit, um, but I wanna go bigger. Well, this is why they say always double check over everything. This uh, front suspension, neither one of them have a nut. That is completely ridiculous. I've already ridden this over 200 miles. I guess I should have given it a once over or twice over. I mean, that's a good lesson. Check over your machines, no matter how good your dealership is. My, my dealership is awesome. I've always had really good experiences with them, but no matter how good they are, I mean, people make mistakes. Like that's what it boils down to. Nobody's perfect. I mean, that's a pretty big mistake, <laughs> but people make mistakes. I mean, it happens all the time. So when you get a new machine, check it over, make sure everything's good to go. All right, now we're gonna work on the tires. I wanna get those cryptids on. Yeah, all right, so first thing, of course we gotta let the air out. With the bead locks removed, all I had to do was break the rear bead. No big deal, right? Should be super easy. I found lots of different methods online and I tried them all. I thought for sure this one was gonna work. It was so close. I was fighting with that stupid one tire for like an hour. And finally I just said, forget it. I'm gonna take it into the tire shop. I got a tire shop right down the road from me. Uh, really cool local place. They put the tires on my Fiero actually. Put it on the machine. Obviously it only took them like two minutes to take the tires off. They didn't charge me a dime, man. Local places are the way to go. If I'd gone to Les Schwab, because I thought they were gonna close before I could get there, I guarantee you Les Schwab would've charged me. But man, these local guys, gotta love it. So now let's go back and put the new tires on. The first one doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just shove it on here. And then the second one, I gotta make sure I mount the opposite direction, because they are definitely directional. I'm gonna do some WD-40. I should've done that probably for taking them off. Maybe I could've done it myself, but since the tire shop did it for free, I'm not too worried about it. Since the top one is the beat lock, I was gonna say, I'm thinking it'll go on pretty easy. down to like five or so. Now let's go get a little preview over here because I'm so excited to see what this is gonna look like. It's pretty sweet. It's a little tall and skinny for my taste, but I didn't really wanna go wider on the front. So the front lift kit is pretty darn simple. It's just gonna look like this with the nut on this side and the uh, bracket, the sock bracket sandwiched in between there just in case you can't exactly see what I'm doing. It's actually gonna be the bolt with the black spacer. All right, there we go. 
So this backside is going to be really similar, except it's going to be on top instead of on bottom. This bracket's actually going to go over the top of the frame here, which I did not realize. And then got the shorter bolt, and that's going to go up through a hole in here. So I'll go ahead and face this the same direction the stock one was, just because. So now we'll do the bottom bolt, and it also has spacers. This side gave me a lot of trouble. I had to push down pretty hard on the axle to get everything lined up. Luckily, the other side was no problem. You could definitely soften up the suspension to make it easier. All right, so this is the rear lift bracket. You can see it's bolted up to the frame there. This is the stock location, and then it moved it down two inches to here. This is the front bracket. So it's two separate brackets on each side. This was the stock location, and now it's moved to up two inches to there. <laughs> oh my goodness, I thought it was big before. Wow. Now that this beast has the two inch lift and the 30 inch tires, uh, I gotta put that clutch kit on. I'm gonna do that first thing in the morning. It's late right now. And then I'm gonna take this bad boy for a test drive. Dude, I think this thing is just gonna absolutely shred in the snow. I'm so excited. Good morning, it is time to work on the clutch. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this cover off. All right, with the cover off, now we just gotta undo these bolts. So here's the difference. This is the stock spring, this is the new spring. So I want to point out, this is my first time ever doing this. The point of this video isn't necessarily to show you all the correct exact ways to do it, but more that if you've never done it before, you can do it. If you guys want to see the pros do it, go check out uh, Blake and Joel on Real Talk Power Sports. They've, uh, what the heck? They've done this a lot, so. are all the old weights. Set those off to the side. The guys that do this all the time make it look so easy. You just pop them in with their thumbs, but I can't quite get it lined up right. So I'm gonna try a little rubber mallet action. All right, now, ah, just gonna press the rest of the way down. Slide them back in here. Make sure you don't put them in upside down. Oh, it's probably not even possible. Yeah. All right, and then make sure none of these plastic clips came out. And just slide that back together. I'm gonna go set it over by the machine. Now we're gonna jump over here to the uh, tool that goes into your vise. Um, just gonna. Set the clutch down on here, secondary. So then what we gotta do, the first thing is we gotta compress it, then we gotta get the uh, lock ring out. So now we're gonna start compressing that spring down a little bit. So that's the lock ring, and you can see there's like a little bit of a gap in there now, so. That's what we're doing is compressing the spring down. So you're just gonna take your lock ring pliers, get them in there, and, and now we'll loosen this up and the spring will decompress. Oh, that doesn't seem right. This is like stuck. Hmm. Ah, oh, there we go. I knew that wasn't right. That spring was caught up on something. Woo! There we go. All right, so we don't want to lose the lock ring. And then there's also, I think they call it a keyway. 
in here somewhere. That's already gone. All right, I'm gonna have to look for it. it must have popped off. It's just sitting down here in the bottom of the clutch. But that's a good lesson. Uh, probably want to reach in and pull this out as soon as you can so when the clutch pops, it's not just gonna go flying off. So now I need to see what I'm gonna re-clock this to. B3 is what they've told me, so it's already in B down here. You can see it says A and there's a corresponding hole, C, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna leave it in B right there. The top hole, you can see the numbers. So we're going B3. That's, that is MSC guidelines according to my setup and my riding style. It's possible I'll lose a little bit of top end, but I got this thing up to 78 miles an hour and I have no need to go that fast. I'm not racing it. Even if I lost like 15 miles an hour off my top end, I'm totally fine with that. The bottom end is where it's at for me. I'm gonna use that a whole lot more than top end power. I'm gonna put this on here. Oh, don't forget this. If you forget your lock ring, you're gonna have to undo the whole thing. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna double check uh, the video right now and make sure that I do this right. Actually, I think Real Talk Power Sports just put out a new video. Um, so I'm gonna check it out just to make sure I'm doing this the right way. All right, so if you wanna kind of understand the mechanics of this better, the keyway is attached to the bottom sheave. So you can twist that around and get it lined up with the slot. You wanna get the two slots lined up. Um, so then as we crank it down, now they did talk about the importance of making sure this is going down nice and straight because if it gets cockeyed, I guess, you know, you can have problems. So I'm gonna go down to where I can put that keyway in. I'm gonna slide that in. And it should just be nice and pretty close to lined up. So at this point, so this is what I was talking about understanding the mechanics. At this point, the lower sheave, whatever this upper part is called, I'm not sure, they're locked together because of that keyway. So when we line them up, we're gonna be moving this upper sheave to, to get everything lined up. So that's what I didn't fully understand from the other videos that I've watched. But um, now that I have it here in person, I do understand. So I know it's super important that you twist this the correct way, which I think is clockwise. All right, so I need to get this over here. So you wanna twist it clockwise so you're adding tension to the spring, otherwise you're not doing anything by re-clocking it. Oh, we're just a little bit too low here. There's a little screw right here that it was hitting. All right, so then you can pinch these to keep them together and tighten it the rest of the way down. Oops, didn't quite get it, did I? So V3, I think there's quite a bit of tension on it. So now, you just want to get it down far enough to where you can get this lock ring back in here. We are good to go now. Now we'll get it all back on the ATV and uh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. cover back on. It's time to go ride. Let's do it.
started smelling a really bad smell and smoke started coming out. Let me tell you guys what I found. The primary just absolutely shredded out what I think is the, uh, the little slides that hold the weights. I don't know what the heck happened. Um, I'm gonna have to wait. It, it's working, we started it up. Everything's spinning up just fine. The belt definitely got a little bit chewed up, but um, I think that's just because everything got so hot. So we're gonna let everything cool down, uh, which is gonna take a while because it's really hot. But we'll just hang out, play in the snow, and then uh, I'm basically just gonna take it really, really easy and limp it back to the truck. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I think I was kind of flustered from the whole clutch situation. Uh, the <laughs> the four-wheeler actually like fell off of the trailer because uh, I, I had it in neutral um, and I didn't have the parking brake on. <laughs> awesome, good job, Ryan. Anyway, let's uh, get this let's get this pulled apart and see what the heck is going on. All right, I'm definitely afraid of what we're gonna find in here. So. That looks terrible. Definitely something bad going on here. So what I'd really like to know is how in the world does this happen? So I did some research. I did a lot of talking to other people. There was nothing wrong with the clutch kit. Basically, I was riding in high in all that deep snow and I was staying under 20 miles an hour. When you're riding like that, um, you can get a lot of belt slippage in high and that's what created all that heat that melted the weight protectors, these guys. Um, it also messed up the belt. The belt isn't horrible, but it's bad enough that I wanna replace it. So I didn't install anything wrong. I just rode like a noob, I guess, whatever you wanna call it. Um, anyway, lesson learned. These pieces are about 50 bucks, so not terrible. Now let's get it all put back together and get this thing back out riding in the snow, in low, if need be. <laughs> so from the recommendation of Redneck Garage, I got this Ultimax belt from Main Street Cycles. Everything works great. I've been running it without the cover a little bit just to make sure everything looks good. Uh, it's working great, no issues. Let's get the cover back on and let's go play in the snow. and their friend, and this thing is working great, no issues at all. 